and welcome to another episode of the official catch up. And it's it's myself, Sean, with Chris. How are you doing today, Chris? Yeah, all right. I'm doing my first food shop later uh, since all this, so that that will be interesting. I'm looking forward to all that that nonsense. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's 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 a different. It's completely like someone out of this world. I've been for my second trip to the Asda the day, and it's I queuing up outside and then. Yeah, try to follow the arrows. There's some people that just I couldn't give a fuck, and they're just going whatever way they want. Eh? It's like mm-hmm. yeah, it's crazy, but and you can tell that people are getting a bit frustrated and angsty eh? also. Uh, but it has to be done. Eh? Um, yeah. And we're we're obviously joined today by Alex Chingwal, who's from Gala Ferry Dean Novice. How are you doing today, Alex? I'm good, mate. Cheers. How are you? I'm good. Um, so you've been keeping yourself busy throughout this. Uh, yeah. So. I've still got my job at Tesco, so that's been quite rammed recently, obviously, with everything that's going on. And then also, I'm studying at uni too, um, so I've still got assignments and whatever due, so still quite busy. So have you been, obviously, I assume you were working at Tesco's kind of part-time before, have you you upped your hours to sort of help cope with what's going on at the moment? Uh, Yeah, I'm doing sort of four days a week, and then I'm I'm doing picking for like the online orders. So okay. I need to be in early. They're getting us in at four AM recently, just to avoid so, the avoid the public. So when somebody goes in the order like a, a tinny beans, and and somebody turns up at your door and said we didn't have baked beans today, so we've decided to deliver kidney beans. That's you that makes that decision. <laughs> I'm a bit better with mine than that, but I... <laughs> you get you get some absolutely outrageous ones, like, but. Um, uh, that's one of the joys we do in the online order, and I suppose you get um, yeah. you're always in for a wee surprise at some point. <laughs> no, that's, that's brilliant, and um, I, I suppose do you feel quite fortunate that you're able to still work at the moment because you see a lot about people that are just stuck in the house and you know they're a bit a bit bored with looking just looking for things to do. And I think it's one of the the rare times where people are off work and they're looking at the people who are at work with a bit of envy I think are you feeling quite fortunate yeah I guess I am so I'm I sort of quit Tesco at like in September time just to focus on my uni stuff and then came back in Christmas and then left again for the second semester and then all this started sort of happened so I messaged my manager and got my job back quite quickly so I'm actually I'm quite glad to be working there's a difference yeah. from the last couple of years working but uh, I'm a long time and you're, here, so. Or, um, and you're staying, you're staying safe, I take it, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They've got, like, bits of tape out and stuff for the social distancing sort of stuff. And then there's a lot of hand sanitizer out for for all of that sort of stuff. So I'm trying to keep my distance from everyone. So it seems to be going okay so far. No, absolutely. That's good. That's good to hear as well. So, yeah, obviously, we've got you on today. Have we chat about... Um, your time uh, at Kelly Hearts under the 20s and then now at Gallus Eddie Rovers. But sorry, before we get on to that, how, um, what's your pathway been like into the football from, I suppose, when you first kicked that, that first football to your time at Kelly Hearts? What was your sort of route as you, you were growing up in the football? Uh, yeah, so I started playing football when I was about 10, which is actually quite late for, a mo- for most people. And then I was playing in like the community cl- clubs in Dunfermline. Um, quite a lot and then I was playing my football locally for a team called Town Hill uh, which was just a couple of boys from school and then the boy's dad that was coaching us and we were actually quite a good team we got a couple of cup runs in the Scottish got to the quarters and stuff and then I played for them until I was about 16 or 17 and then after that I moved to Tyne Castle to play for their 19s and then their 20s as well and uh, across those two years I was there I was in and out uh, I got a few runs in the first team a few games and then after that Togs was actually my coach at the 20s so he was moving to Kelty after that so he just gave me a phone and said this is what's happening and I went in for a meeting with him Lee and Togs and then signed from there really it was quite an easy decision after the their presentation and stuff. It looked like a really good setup. And then after that, that's when I moved on to Kelty. And is that where you, you're sort of based? Are you over the, the five side of things? Yeah, I live just outside Dunfermline, so uh, Kelty was really convenient. It's only a 20-minute drive from me, uh, and uh, that worked out really well, actually. 
And and how much did you learn from from your time both at Tynecastle and and Kelly Hearts that that sort of helped prepare you to make that step up to playing in the Lowlands League? How was your development within those sides? Uh, so Tynecastle and Kelty both had like a strong en- emphasis on playing football out from the back and stuff like that, and trying to play like tiki taka sort of football. So at Tyne it was good, um, and then moving into Kelty it just solidified that a bit more because at Tiny we were a bit leaky at the back, as you see from some teams that try and play like that style of football. But uh, obviously having Lee on board, he helped us really solidify that. And obviously you saw us a few games as well. So we were actually a really good side and managed to play well. Good football. So that was really enjoyable. No, absolutely. Um, yeah, myself and, and Chris got along to quite a few uh, the under-20 games during the season um, for both Kelly and for a few other sides as well. Um, and we were there, obviously, at the, that final between yourselves and Spartans. Did you play, play in that one? Yeah, so I played in uh, <clears throat> most of the games, actually. Uh, we played one final against Hutchie, which was at the Orium, and we beat them 5-1. That was a really good performance, actually. We played really good football. And then, obviously, the one at Spartans, that was at uh, Roxburn's pitch. But that didn't go so well. We got beat 3-0 in that one. But um, I don't have yeah. any regrets about that at all because the way we played and stuff made it enjoyable every game and training and stuff like that. So it was a really good experience. Yeah, absolutely. I think because um, we, we got a lot along to a lot of them and, and you could see sort of not just the, the frustration in that sort of final game a little bit, um, because of the amount of success, but you could see just how good um, Spartans were as well, because they were another under twenty side that we we managed to catch a couple of times alongside um, Kelly. And there was two sort of dominant dominant teams before um, a lot of guys from from Kelly under twenty to, to play for other teams, which included obviously your move um, down to Gallus Ferry Dean Rovers. What was that like? That making that step up? But yeah, it was a, it was a quite a competitive league that you were playing in but moving, making the move into men's football is a, it's quite a significant step up at, at times how did you find it? I thought it was more really a bigger jump in like the physicality obviously with the twins sometimes you're playing against boys that are a bit younger than you so obviously now going to playing against men it's quite a big jump but I thought Kelty prepared me well from to make that step up in the way of playing out and stuff like that at left back and all the different options you can you can do when playing there and then so it was morally just trying to get my fitness up a bit more to play like in a more physical league but I thought I was ready for it and I thought I've done not too badly so far hopefully. No you're definitely making an impact and you've you've certainly been able to keep your place in the, the first team which you know that's a testament on its own um, so going along to Gal how did that come about was it Neil that brought you in or or was it through other connections? Uh, so I knew Eddie. My first year at Tiny, I kind of played played for the 20s, like a few games at the end of the season, just to see if I was going to go up or not. And uh, Eddie was a the coach there, but he, he left over that summer. So I only really had a few weeks with Eddie. But he was like one of the guys that I saw trying to implement that kind of way of football, trying to play, play it from the back and stuff. So... He came up to a couple of games. He was at a Hutchie game, actually, one of the ones we lost last year at, uh, at Kelty. But he gave me a phone towards the end of the season and said, do you want to come along and whatever? And then went along for a few trainings and then decided to sign there. So it worked out quite well for me just from knowing Eddie for that few weeks. You you hit the ground running pretty quickly, um, getting getting your place uh, in the, that gala Ferry Dean um, first 11 pretty quickly and you managed to maintain that was there any sort of I don't know like standout um, games or moments during your, your time down at Gala that, that kind of stand out as a, maybe a turning point or a point where you thought you know that this was the, the right thing to be doing to, to be playing down there uh, Yeah obviously playing against like the opposition the likes of like Kelty and Bonnie Rigg and stuff like that you can see like the quality they've got so I felt that although we lost that first game against Kelty I played not too badly and then the second game I played quite well as well and then against some other teams as well had some good performances so it gives you confidence to to let you know that you can play at this level and obviously I'm still young it's my first season there so 
I've got plenty of time to improve my, my game, so it's quite reassuring. Yeah, uh, I, uh, I talk up that Kelty team uh, from last season, under 20s, because I thought you were brilliant. You had you know, a, a brilliant group of boys there. Um, I, I did get a few, fair few bit of stick from the, the Spartans lads, obviously. They thought I was being a wee bit biased, but uh, <laughs> no, I, you were brilliant to watch, and you know, I really enjoyed coming up on a Friday or, you know, uh, during the week to see you in a cup game. And uh, a lot of the lads, it's good to see, obviously, a lot of the lads uh, doing well, first team football with Lone League teams like yourself and, and obviously uh, East of Scotland and then maybe higher up in the uh, youth teams, uh, uh, league footballers. Uh, I Just mm. just to say, Ching, it was, it was brilliant to watch these guys. Yeah, it was, it was great fun playing as well, obviously, impressing the parents and stuff. I think they all like to watch us as well, so it was really good that was a great team to be a part of and it would have been interesting to see if we if we did stick together how well we could have done or in like the senior leagues that would have been quite enjoyable as well yeah yeah absolutely and in terms of gala obviously um i was quite happy when you when you got your your move to gala i wasn't quite expecting you you would be like as regular just coming uh coming mm-hmm. to gala but you've i think you've done fantastically well gala's a a brilliant club and uh, the Netherdale was just a, a, a brilliant place to be, I think. Yeah, cheers. Uh, it was a great place. There's a lot of good people like behind the scenes making it work, like Debbie and Rizo, the, the chairman and his wife, they put in a lot of work to make everything happen down there. So it's a great club to be a part of. Might obviously speak to a few more of the, the, the Kelty boys from last season, Ching. Uh, I, I can't wait to speak to Craig Richardson. I'm sure he'll... Uh, <laughs> you know, I got I got a few pillars last season from him saying that I never spoke, uh, never you know uh, talked up the the goalie enough. But you know, as I said to him then, you know, I don't think he had much to do in that team. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so one to get on. I'll be listening to that one for sure. And I what Chris said there, I, we we did get along a lot of the games, and and there were some incredible boys to watch in that that team. So it'll be interesting, even for myself, if I'm not on those calls, to have a listen back to some more of those interviews as well. Um, going back to your, your sort of time at Gala, obviously at the beginning of the season there was a lot of change at the club um, and I think we were one of the, we were not uber critical but we, we had our sort of concerns about how Gala were going to cope going into the season with the amount of change they'd made during pre-season mm-hmm. but do you feel like the club's exceeded expectations or has it been quite a frustrating season for, for you guys? With the, obviously there was a huge change last season and pretty much the whole team changed from there so I think a lot of people were expecting quite a worse like a worse um, performance this season from Gala but I think we've done quite well we've had a good couple of results against like EK and beating Cali Braves and stuff like that and then we got a not bad run in the Scottish too and then obviously we've had some some poor moments as well like inconsistency obviously at, uh, at East Stirling <laughs> it was 2-2 and then we drew, we conceded three goals and I don't know how long it was, maybe 10 minutes at most. So I think we've done quite well, but there's some obviously still inconsistencies that you'll get with a new team. But I think we've done well and exceeded expectations and done a reasonable job for a new team anyway. No, yeah, yeah, I would I would totally agree with that. And um, I know Chris and Derek are the same as well. And yeah, I suppose right now well, there's a lot of sort of uncertainty about the future because of the West of Scotland coming in and there's going to be a lot of new teams that, that we're not all familiar with coming yeah. from the East and the West. Um, there's a sort of worry with some of the Lone League sides that, or maybe not a worry, but you know, an idea that they potentially going to move move down a league to, to find a level over the next few years. But at the moment, Gala are certainly doing a, a really good job of making sure, you know, putting their stamp on on their place in the, the Lone League and, and long may it continue. Yeah. Obviously, Obviously, with everything that's going on just now, it's putting an end to the season. There's a bit of uncertainty going on. How have you found keeping in? How have you found keeping in touch with the the club and, and other players and the coaches and whatnot? Are they sort of leaving you to get just get on with things because you know everybody's got their own things going on throughout this, or are you keeping in quite close contact through this? Uh, I text a couple of the boys, and then apart from that, we've been kind of left to do our own thing we've obviously been told to keep fit as you'd expect and then apart from that really it's just sort of do your own thing and be sensible of course no absolutely and and one of the questions that we we kind of like to ask is 
you know, not just for, for a Lowland League or a Gala perspective, but um, what's what's an outcome that you would like to see at the end of all this? Because I think it's one of the most, if not the most debated thing in football at the moment is what should happen when when the season resumes. Will it resume? Shall it be null and void? Uh, mm. Short in next season, what's your sort of thoughts? Yeah, I think it would be very unfair for it to be null and void, obviously. All the, the teams at the top will feel hard done by, especially like Kelty and Bonnie Rig are obviously quite close and there's still a good title race to go if they've still got to play each other. But um, I'm not sure how they could sort it, to be honest, because obviously they can't be putting two teams up and then obviously down at the bottom as well, they'll have complaints too, because Vale, I think they've got a game in hand, don't they? And maybe even a couple on Edinburgh. So, um, I, no, I think uh, you're quite right. It's until we sort of know how long this is going to go on for, because you've got everything for a month to six months, and then even once that starts up, uh, who knows if it'll be behind closed doors. There's so many unknowns at the moment, but it's sort of interesting to get people's views, because I think people are very, especially on the null and void and finishing the season sort of thing, there's there's a lot of divide on that, so it'll be interesting to see how, how that all pans out as, as we move forward. So what about, just before we finish off, I just want to get an idea for, for yourself and, and what your sorry, ambitions, what what are you hoping for the future? Are you quite enjoying it down at Gala? Are you hoping to, to play for you know as long as you can? What's your sorry, ambitions moving forward? Uh, as long as it provides, and yeah, I'd like to keep playing in the Lowland and it's a good league to be playing in. And, um, but uh, obviously with uni and stuff, I don't know if I'll need to move away for work or whatever because a lot of jobs are down in London which obviously I wouldn't be able to play football down there but as long as I'm up in Scotland and in Edinburgh then I'd enjoy keep playing football for as long as I can obviously it's a good way to keep fit and meet new boys and that and obviously play at a competitive level for as long as we can have you I'm sure we'll be happy to have you in the old league as well just saw something funny on Facebook one of my mates uh, uh, he's an older guy I used to go to, to college with but uh, he was doing one of them you know who are you you know what sort of celebrity you look you look like and he got like Donald Glover and Idris Elba and all that so <laughs> I don't know I don't know how that was possible but uh, I was sort of laughing in the background a wee bit there at that uh, but no, it's uh, brilliant to have you on, Ching. It's obviously good to get a, a wee bit of coverage for the likes of Gala and, and other clubs. I'm sure we'll, we'll get around uh, the likes of, you know, Cumbernauld Colts and Sparrens uh, and clubs that we've not talked to. But yeah, no, it's always a pleasure speaking to you, mate. Yeah, cheers for having me on. Right, we'll let you go on with your day and thanks very much. I'll speak to you later, bud. Mm-hmm.